Hello friends, welcome back to another post-production tutorial. In this video, we're gonna have a look at how to download Baselight Look off Filmlight's website. Uh, we're gonna talk through the registration process and the download process and the setup process. Let's get into it. The first step to download Baselight Look is nice and easy. Head to my YouTube description and click the link below, which will take you to this page here. This page is the overview of Baselight Look, which shows the restrictions and the features of the software. And you can see on the right hand corner of the web page, there's a free license button, which we're gonna click. Big thing to point out here, Baselight Look is Mac only. If you have a Windows PC, you are out of luck. We're gonna click the free license button on the right hand side of the web page. This will take us through to the product store. We'll click ahead, order now, fill in your details here. Once we click ahead, we can see that this product is free. And just like that, you've ordered Baselight Look. Now we have an order number here, but that's actually not a very important piece of information right now. All of the important information is gonna be sent to your email. So if I navigate over to my email, I can see that I've got two emails. The first email should be a confirmation order. You can save this for your records, but there's no pertinent information in this email. The second email is a download and license information email, and this is where you'll be able to download Baselight Look and license your product. If we click on the first download link, it'll open a DMG file for us to install. Once we've installed Baselight Look, we can use the license key, which is found below the file download, to activate our license of Baselight Look. This is an auto-renewing license that will last six months. Once I've opened up this DMG file, I'm gonna open the package. Follow all the prompts that the installer gives you. Everything should be fairly self-explanatory here. Once the installation is successful, I'm gonna move the installer to the bin and Baselight Look has successfully installed. To open up Baselight Look for the first time, I'm gonna to navigate to the Go tab up the top left-hand corner of my display, head to the Applications folder, double-click the Baselight Look folder, and double-click the first folder here. You can see in this folder, we have the main Baselight Look application, but we can also access other parts of the Baselight interface, things like preferences and setups, without opening the main Baselight application. We'll open up a few of these in a second. Firstly though, we need to activate our license. I'm going to double click the Baselight Look application and you'll see we'll be prompted to activate Baselight Look with a license key. I'm going to tab across to my email, copy and paste my license key, paste it into the serial number box and click activate. Congratulations, Baselight is now licensed. Okay, my computer is gonna think about it for a second. Don't worry if this takes a few seconds. And here we go, this is Baselight Look. Okay, I can see there's a database backup error. That's okay for now, we'll just ignore that for a week. See if it comes back. I can see that Baselight Look is prompting me to allow access to certain folders. I'll hit okay to that. And we're in. There's been a bit of a visual glitch that's been happening on Baselight Student and now Baselight Look for quite some time for me personally. When you open up Baselight Student or Baselight Look, the host column will be blank. The easiest fix that I've found for this is you just hit the refresh button and you can see that your local host will appear. And now we're in. Baselight Look is incredibly similar to Baselight Student. If you're interested in learning a bit about the UI and how Baselight works, definitely check out some of my free training series. I've linked them up the top. For now though, we'll exit Baselight Look and we'll do the setup properly. Uh, we'll go back to our Baselight Look folder and set up some of the basic things that we should definitely set up before we get grading. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna click the Baselight Setup alias found in the Baselight Look folder, and this will open up our Setups Editor. This is a great way to edit your setups without having to open the full Baselight Look application. A great thing to do when you start Baselight for the first time, select the format which best suits your reason, and we're gonna duplicate this format and customize it. Once I've named it, I'm going to activate the setup so it's the current setup, and I can go ahead and start customizing this setup. The first thing to check is your primary output. Baselight Look does have support for SDI monitoring, including support for HDR, but in my case, I don't have any external monitoring. I'm just going to be viewing the display in my UI on my laptop. So this setting works for me. If we head down to our display settings, the viewing color space should be the first thing that you check. I'm using Baselight Look on an Apple MacBook Pro, and my laptop screen is not Rec. 709 2.4 gamma. It is 2.2 gamma P3 D65. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my viewing color space correctly in the display settings here in my setups editor. Fantastic. Now that we've done that, we can hit save and we can jump to the new scenes tab on the top right hand corner. 
There's a lot you can adjust here, but I'm gonna scroll down to the Format and Color tab and adjust my working color space. I normally grade an Asus CCT with an Asus DRT, so I'm gonna go ahead and customize that here. When I'm using this setup, these settings that I apply here will populate whenever I create a new scene. So it saves me a lot of time, especially if I grade like this consistently, to set it up in my setup editor here. The last thing that I'm gonna do in the new scenes tab is I'm gonna scroll down to my image containers and proxy sub panel, and I'm gonna select a container directory for my media. This is the default media location that Baselight will try and look for, and it defaults to images one, which won't be a drive on your Mac. To change this, we're gonna go ahead, click browse, and you can see that the scan directory images one is not found. We'll refresh our file browser in the UI. I've actually set a bookmark to my desktop. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that now, which will take me into my hard drive to my desktop. And I've just created a temporary base light directory folder here. So I can show you as an example, I'm gonna hit okay. Now you can see the default container directory is set to the directory folder on my desktop. If you're working on a hard drive or an SSD, point your default container directory to that location. Fantastic. And that's all we need to do in the setups editor. This leaves us with one more task before we can get into grading and we're going to change it in the preferences editor. The settings we want to look at here is in the system tab on the top left. So we'll click that. The thing that we want to change here is the base light on disk cache location. And you can see that I've already set this to a folder on my desktop. I had installed Baselight Student prior to Baselight Look, so this is obviously carried across. Another thing to note here is the on-disk image cache size, which is currently set to 20 gig. Baselight will keep on creating cache files until the 20 gig limit is reached, so if you have more space or less space that you want to dedicate to your cache, you can change this here. A quick note, the cache is unnecessary for Baselight to function, it'll just make things go faster. So set the cache size as you wish. As we'll scroll down, you can see that we can set up external devices here. So you can connect the Filmlight slate and other non-Filmlight branded panels. The amount of external devices that you can connect is pretty limited in Baselight Look. Something new that they've also added here in Baselight Look compared to Baselight Student is the ability to export BLG files. And you can see there's a BLG quick export location, which you can set up here as well. I'm gonna to navigate to my desktop, create myself a BLG folder and set that here. Now that we're done, we can save and quit. And guys, that's it. Baselight Look should be fully ready to go. If you wanna take a deep dive into Baselight Look, definitely go check out my Baselight student tutorials. They're all very applicable here. Nothing big has changed between Baselight Look and Baselight student. But don't worry, more Baselight Look tutorials are coming soon. Definitely hit that subscribe button if you wanna see them. Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope that was a really good guide to get you up to speed with Baselight Look. Let me know what you wanna see in the comments below. Make sure to give me a like and subscribe to see some more Baselight Look tutorials. We'll catch you in the next one. Cheers guys.